Hello and welcome to the ninth installment of my Pokemon Generation 3 ROM hacking series. The focus of this tutorial is to learn how to give the player Pokemon and items. The reverse is also true, we'll be taking away from the player as well. This video will be broken down into the following segments. How do I give the player a Pokemon? How do I give the player an item? And how do I take an item away from the player? Following these segments will be an application demonstration. In this final part, we will be giving the player a choice between receiving one of two different Pokémon. Before we start the bulk of this tutorial, I want to go over two things that I really should have mentioned in my first scripting tutorial. Blank space and comments. Unfortunately, these things are so natural that they slipped my mind. Whenever you see blank space in scripts, like when a whole line in XSE is skipped, it doesn't really mean anything. Programmers use blank space to improve the readability of their code. The only time we can't use blank space to our liking is in between other characters. For example, we can't separate pound org into pound o space rg, and we can't separate message box into ms space g box. Comments can be made with the single quotation mark. Everything written after this mark will be entirely ignored by the compiler. Programmers use these to inform themselves and others of how their code works and to enhance readability and comprehensibility. We will begin by discussing the Give Pokemon command, which is self-explanatory. We're going to have an NPC kindly give the player a Pokemon. The script on screen is a simple NPC dialogue script. The NPC says here is a Pokemon, then the script ends. We need to fill in the space on line 6 with the Give Pokemon command. Give Pokemon has a whopping 6 parameters. The first parameter indicates which Pokemon is given. The hexadecimal value that goes here corresponds to the Pokemon's national dex entry number. The second parameter indicates the level of the Pokémon. The third parameter indicates the Pokémon's held item, if any. I'll put these hex values in the description of this video. The final three parameters are just buffers, so we can safely lock them in as zeros. I've filled out the command. If you reference the hex values in the description, you can see that my NPC is giving the player a Squirtle at level 10 holding a Lepaberry. Why a Squirtle? Because it's my favorite water starter just ahead of Totodile. You may recall that whenever the player is given a Pokémon in the game, a congratulatory tune is played and an indicative message is displayed. These things unfortunately aren't a part of this command, and we won't be getting to sounds until a future video, so we'll have to be content with this for a short while. If we open our Pokémon menu, we can see that we have indeed been given a Squirtle at level 10 holding a Lepaberry. If you're testing this command before the point where the player is given his or her Pokémon from the Professor, you'll need to tack an additional command into your script somewhere. This command is set flag, then a particular hexadecimal value. If you're hacking fire red, this value is 0x828. If you're hacking ruby, this value is 0x800. And if you're hacking emerald, this value is 0x860. This line will activate the Pokemon tab in the player's menu, allowing you to view your party of Pokemon. I won't go into what flags are or how they work until a future tutorial, so you'll just have to trust me whenever I mention them. Next up is the Give Item command. I like this one much more than the Give Pokemon because it actually plays the jingle and displays the message when you receive the item. No extra work on your end is required. The script on screen is a simple NPC dialogue script. The NPC says here is an item, then the script ends. We need to fill in the space on line 6 with the Give Item command. Give Item has three parameters. The first indicates which item is to be given. The hex values for all of the items can be found in the description of this video. The second indicates the quantity of how many said items are to be given. The third indicates whether the player is being given the item or if the player has found the item. This will change the congratulatory stuff. You can use either message underscore find or message underscore obtain. I filled out the command. If you reference the hex values in the description, you can see that my NPC is giving the player 18 Pokeballs. If we open our items menu, we can see that we have indeed been given 18 Pokeballs. We've been giving the player free stuff for this entire video, so how about we take something away? Unfortunately, there is no command or simple workaround for taking away a Pokemon from the player, however we can take an item. Just like we have the give item command, we also have the check item and remove item commands. The script we're going to write in this example will follow this formula. First, check if the player has a potion. If not, exit the script. If so, take the potion from the player, then exit the script. Let's get started. I've already written the first five lines which simply set up the interaction. 
The NPC says let me check your bag, and that's all we have done so far. Following our formula, we now need to check if the player has a potion. To do this, use the check item command. This command has two parameters. The first parameter is the hexadecimal value for whichever item you're checking for. Referencing the list of items in the video's description, we can see that the potion has a value of 0xd. The second parameter is the quantity of potions we're checking for. This part is going to be a little bit tricky since the player can have more than one potion. Because of this, I'm going to quickly go over how to implement inequalities into our scripts. By inequalities, I mean the not equal to, equal to, less than, greater than, less than or equal to, and greater than or equal to operations. If you recall back to the last tutorial when we discussed yes or no questions, we used the value 0x1 when deciding whether or not the player chose yes. When we're scripting, we use the 0x0 value to denote less than. The 0x1 value is used to denote equal to. 0x2 denotes greater than. 0x3 denotes less than or equal to. 0x4 denotes greater than or equal to. And finally, the 0x5 value denotes not equal to. Keeping this in mind, let's return to our script. I filled in the check item command on line 6. On line 7, type compare last result 0x1. This should be familiar to you. We're simply deciding if the check item command indeed found that the player has a potion. On line 8, type if 0x4 go to at yes. When we wrote this in our yes or no question script, we used the value 0x1 instead of 0x4. That's because a yes or no question can only result in one of two operations, yes or no. This is not the case with check items since the player may have more than the quantity specified in the check item command. Our if statement is technically saying, if the player has at least one potion, go to the at yes pointer. Before we write the at yes pointer section, let's finish off the possibility that the player does not have at least one potion. For this, we'll just have the NPC say, you don't have what I'm looking for, then end the script. Now for the at yes pointer section. All we've done so far is check if the player has at least one potion. Now we need to remove or take a potion away from the player. To do this, use the remove item command. This command takes two parameters, the first being the hex value of the item to remove and the second being the quantity to remove. I've filled in these values so that the player loses out on a single potion. After this, we'll have the NPC say, I took a potion from you, then end the script. Viewing the result in game, we can see that if the player does not have a potion, the NPC decides not to take anything. However, now the player has 5 potions. 5 is mathematically at least 1, so the NPC snatches one of our potions, leaving us with only 4 of them. That's everything I wanted to cover in this tutorial. Using the information we've learned, we will create a script in which the player is given a choice between two different Pokemon using a combination of yes or no questions and the give Pokemon command. I want to take this time to go over the go to command. We use it quite frequently. You should know by now that it tells the script where to continue its execution. If you were paying attention to the script that was being made in the last application demonstration, I used the go to command on its own without an if statement before it. We can do this if we already 100% know where we want the script to continue without any input from the user. You'll see this usage again after we give the player his or her chosen Pokemon. I mainly do this to cut down on the amount of code I have to write. If I didn't merge the two give Pokemon branches, I'd have to end the script using the same exact commands twice once in the first Pokemon's branch, and another time in the second Pokemon's branch. You can think of this script as a hammock. It starts at a single point, then branches out in different directions, and finally comes back together at another single point. This improves readability, improves modularity, which may help with any future edits that need to be made, and cuts down on the amount of bytes that are used when we compile the script. We're about at the end of creating this script. Everything that went into making this has been taught to you through this tutorial. Hopefully you all learned something valuable from this, and if you have any questions, please feel free to ask either at Pokey Community or right here in my video's comments section. Thank you so much for being my audience, and I'll be back in the 10th installment of this series.